What's going on everybody? I'm Patrick from Powlax and in this video we're going to be covering all of the subbing and transition elements in box lacrosse. So transition is one of the most important parts of box lacrosse. Because of the shot clock and how quickly the game moves, if you don't really master this subbing game, you can be very vulnerable on defense and you won't get a lot of great opportunities on the offensive transition side. For the most part with the box teams that I've coached, whether it was six years ago with Vista, with Grandview, or with any of the Predators teams, the majority of our goals are scored within transition and there are tons of little tricks where we can prevent the other team's transition as well as get more transition depending on what period it is. As we're going through this video, if you feel like you'd rather see this printed out and add it to your playbook, you can get the playbook PDF at patreon.com slash by clicking this link up in the corner or the link down in the description and this will be a part of our $5 complete set tier. As we go through this video, the first thing that we're going to cover is the sub game. Once we understand that, it's going to give us a much better understanding of how the clearing and the riding works. Then we're going to go through all of the transition defensive principles, then the transition offensive stuff, and there's a lot of really cool things that you can do that are pretty easy to train your kids to do. So as we get into the sub game, the first thing we have to cover is the exchange areas. And so if these are the boxes where all the players are going to line up, each exchange area is going to come out two feet out of the boards and extend two feet past each door. So if this is the blue team, their exchange area is going to come out like this. And so if the red team is up here, their exchange area will be right here. And so what this allows us to do is it allows our players to enter the exchange area, get out of the play, and release another player. So players don't actually have to step into the bench to release another player. They just have to be inside this exchange area and be out of the play. If, if the play is still there, you can't really release another player if the player who comes into the area is still in the play. For the most part, if you're playing on a real box field, these will be the areas. And then if you're playing on a field that doesn't have traditional box markings, the exchange areas are going to extend to the midline. But so understanding how the exchange areas work is really going to help you avoid too many men penalties and it's also going to allow us to really move quickly as we're subbing in and out. Here you can see what the exchange area markings are like on a real box line field. Once our players have a good understanding of the exchange areas, now we're going to go through the two separate types of subbing. So there's defense to offense subbing and then there's personnel subbing. And so defense to offense basically means that we're only going to sub as we're moving and clearing the ball moving from defense to offense. Personnel subbing is a little different where we're going to have all of our offensive personnel go on the floor when we go to offense and then as the ball comes to our defensive end, they're actually going to sub out and we're going to get all of our defensive personnel on. It's a little more intricate, but the players seem to do better within it because then you don't get that lazy attackman back on D who has no idea how to slide or switch or play box defense. The next thing that we have to understand is that the sub game is going to be different if it is the first or third period versus the second period because as the goalies switch and we attack different ends, our benches are going to be on the opposite ends of the field and that's going to create a little bit of variation. So traditionally in the first and third period, our benches are going to be in our defensive half. Now that's mostly it because as teams warm up, the goalie's going to go to the side of the bench that they're on. Then in the second period, they're going to switch. So now we're going to cover all of the different ways that we can sub depending on which period it is. And so this is a first and third period because our benches is on our defensive half. And so if the red team is clearing, as the ball moves up this side, which we'll cover when we get to clearing, D1 can sub out for O1 as the ball moves up the floor. And because both teams are going to be doing D to O subbing, O1 is just gonna get in and he's going to play defense. So now if we're using our personnel subbing and the red team is clearing, as the ball comes up this side, D1 will sub out for O1 who will come on the floor and then O1 will be able to come through, hit this exchange area, and he will be able to release D1. And so in the first and third periods, we're really able to utilize our personnel subbing because we're not gonna get beat on transition defense because we are releasing so far into our defensive end. Now the other really big thing to understand within our personnel subbing is that rather than having all of the players lined up towards the offensive end like we would have if we were subbing only from D to O, 
we are going to have our players divided in two lines going out each door. The door they're going to be by is, is respective to what they're playing. So we've got our offensive personnel in blue going to our offensive end, and our defensive personnel are going to our defensive end. The big thing is you just got to make sure that these players know if the ball is coming back on defense, the offensive players should get out of the way on the bench so that their players can get off the floor. In this clip, we're going to show you the personnel subbing in the first and third period. So we are the team in white who is clearing, they are the team in dark, and so as we are moving up the floor, notice that the players are subbing off on the defensive end and entering the field on the offensive end. And then we also see that the other team is using their personnel subbing by subbing their offensive personnel off and their defensive personnel on. So now as we get into the second period subbing, everything's going to kind of be flipped. And so now we are going to be attacking the area that is near our bench and defending the area away from our bench. And this is going to mean that for the most part, everyone here is going to be wanting to use the D to O subbing pattern. So. In this example, we are going to be showing the blue team clearing the ball down rather than the red team just to keep it similar in how we are moving down the floor. Now notice, if we're using D to O subbing, we're still lining up at the offensive side of our box, but they're on the opposite sides because we're attacking a different side. So as the blue team clears up this way, D1 will come through and he will sub off at his box for O1. Now this is gonna be huge later, just noticing how close to the opposing goal we get. This really means that the players who are playing defense need to make sure that they are dropping in and getting in to play defense as quickly as they can so that the blue team cannot hit this look coming out of the box. Now, as we're in our second period, if we want to move to our personnel subbing, there's just one big rule. As we are riding, moving from offense to defense, the only players who can sub out are the players who are near the bench. So if O1 decides he's going to sub out, he can get D1 on, it doesn't take too much time. But if O2 decides he's gonna come from the opposite side of the floor to try to run off and get the other player on, it's gonna take way, way too long. For the most part, I always run the D to O subbing pattern in the second period and just have all of the defensive players just get in because it's too risky to have a player thinking he's gonna be able to sub out and then giving up that offensive transition. So now, as we're clearing the ball, which we'll clear it up this side, see it in a minute, the players who can sub out are going to come to the benches, they're gonna release in the same manner that we just covered within the D to O subbing pattern. So understanding the differences within the period is going to help us. If you just wanna run the D to O subbing pattern the whole time, that's totally fine, but you will get caught with some offensive personnel on defense at some certain points. The other big thing to understand if you're gonna run both types is how players are going to line up on the benches. If we're going D to O, we're gonna come off the field on our defensive end and enter the field on our offensive end. Then if we are gonna be using our personnel subbing, we have defensive personnel lined up at the defensive sides and offensive personnel lined up at the offensive side. In this clip, I want you to notice this player here. Watch how he has an opportunity to stop this breakaway from ever happening, but he decides to sub even though it's a second period. And because he subs, we get a player on the offensive end, a nice headman pass and a breakaway goal simply because he decided he was going to sub out during the second period. Before we get into our riding and clearing where we go over kind of some of the more strategies stuff let's go over what our personnel is going to be so we've got offensive personnel who are obviously going to play offense defensive personnel who will be playing defense and then we've got transition players who are going to be defensive personnel but have the best sticks to move the ball up the floor so if we're using our personnel subbing we're going to want to get three defensive players who only play defense on the floor with two transition players so the transition players can clear the ball while the defensive players sub off. Now you do not have to stipulate these different types of players. For the most part, if I'm coaching a team of youth players, it's not our high level high school box. We won't do any of the personnel subbing for the most part because I want everyone to play every position. And you definitely don't need to have transition players that are made, but it is a little easier when you get into the clearing game because then you don't have to base who is supposed to clear on the position. We actually had a practice last night where we were going over all of the same stuff I'm telling you here. And the one thing that players couldn't quite get through their head is if they were the defenseman off box, they were the one who had to clear the ball. They got it a little bit as they, as they came through it and it was their first time doing it, but 
it's easier to have a player who knows he needs to stay on the floor to clear the ball rather than having someone assess a situation and then know that that player is them. Now we're going to be getting into our riding and clearing game. And as we do that, we're not going to be covering our D to O subbing. All you have to know is that if we're moving from offense to defense, those players won't sub out, whereas we're going to cover the personnel subbing, and so our players dropping into defense will be subbing out. Now, within the diagram, we are going to have the red team gain possession, and they're going to be clearing down the field, and the blue team is going to be dropping in to play defense. So we're going to cover the defensive aspects first, and then we'll cover the clearing aspects. So as the ball turns over and these players start to drop to get into play defense, Whoever is the deepest player, so 0-1, he has to get in to play defense. He needs to not sub out. Now, if your team knows how to read the field, read the play, and he knows that he can get off the field to get defensemen on before there's anything, that's great. But for the most part, whoever's the deepest player has to know to go in and stop any type of offensive transition for the other team. Now, once he's stopped the break, everybody else is going to sub off. And then as they're subbing off, this is a really good thing for our defensive sides because we're entering defensively deep in our defensive zone. These players are going to come on the field and they're going to match up against the players who are coming in. So now from the clearing perspective, our first job is our goalie or whoever is clearing the ball at the field has to have an outlet. And so our two transition players, they are going to go to the back off box side corner and then up the wing on the off box side. We never want to clear up the box side because that's where all of these substitutions happens. We can get jumped. So then all of the players who are in playing defense who are not in this clearing game, they're going to sub out and we are going to get our offensive personnel on the floor. And so as we play through this, G1 is going to pass out to T1. He's going to carry up the field. If he can see a headman pass and pass it up to T2, that's awesome. And now once he's on the floor and these players have come onto the floor, he can move it. And now as we control with the players who just subbed onto the floor, these two players can now sub back off of the floor. And so as we move to our offensive end, if we want to get all of our offensive personnel on or we want to sub everyone, the key is just we got to sub on three new players, clear with two players, then the clearing players can sub out. In this clip, we get a really quick turnover and we think we're going to have some offensive transition, but because we are in the first quarter, we don't get the transition because as the defensive team subs off and then onto the floor in the defensive zone, they easily handle this break. Once this player sees that there is no offensive transition opportunity, he passes to a teammate and subs off. In this clip, we see how we can sub before we even actually move to the offensive end. The goalie outlets the pass to the off box side. As he's coming up field, he realizes that the other team is not really pressuring him at all. So he just passes to one of his teammates that come out of the box and subs off right away. This is another example of how easy it can be to clear if the other team doesn't pressure you. The player doesn't even have to get across midfield before he passes to a player who came out of the box and he can then sub off. Here we get a really great view of why in the first and third period we don't really have to worry about defensive transition as long as we sub out fast enough. We get a nice little turnover, a headman pass, and we think there's going to be some offensive transition, but by subbing on so far into our defensive half, we easily cut the break, and now our transition players can sub out. So now, once we get to the second period, we're most likely going to be doing defense to offense subbing and not personnel subbing, but we're just going to show you exactly how it works. So in this example, the blue team is going to be clearing, the red team is going to be riding, and we're kind of going to show you how some of our offensive personnel are definitely going to be playing defense. So uh, they get a shot on cage, the goalie catches it. Now from the riding perspective, these two players are the only players who are going to be able to get off the floor in time to get D1 and D2 onto the floor. 01, 05, and 04 have to get in to play defense. And as they get in, they're going to need to make sure they get deep into the zone and pick up the players who are clearing so that we don't give up any transition from players coming out of the box. Now, as our players are clearing, it's the same as it was last time. We are going to be getting two players to the off box side. We're going to outlet it to them. They're going to come up the floor. And now, one of the looks that we'll cover a little bit later, and so I'll just repeat it now, as D2, D1, 
and D3 come to the box. We're going to be exiting out of the box. And this pass up ahead to this player is a really easy way to get some good transition opportunities. Now, once we're in and we maybe we get a player who comes up high, we move the ball to that player. Now, we can definitely settle, take our time, and have our transition players sub back off of the floor. In this clip, we get an example of the second period personnel subbing. Notice that as the ball is cleared up the off box side, the opposing players who are close to the box can still sub off to get defensive personnel on. Now that we understand our riding and clearing, we're gonna talk about some of the things we wanna do within our transition defensive sets. Transition defense is really easy. We just don't wanna get beat into our own zone. We really just wanna make sure that we get in. So as we get in and we're on a, what I'll call a slow break, Basically, as the offensive players are carrying in and coming in and maybe they're cutting, doing whatever, getting into their house formation or their box and one, we just want to make sure that as we come into play, we get inside out to play the ball and all these other players. So we come inside, then step out to play them, cover the players who are in the middle, and then as we are coming inside out to play the offensive players, Players need to point. They need to point. I have him. He's number seven, and they have to communicate who they have. There are so many times in box lacrosse because it happens so fast. The players just don't point at who they have to let the player behind them know, okay, I'm not guarding him anymore. I got to go find a new guy. So it's get inside out to, to match up. As you match up, point at your player make sure that no one else is defending your guy so that we're not leaving someone else open. In this clip, I simply want to show that even though you might match up or think someone is defending a specific player, you still need to hustle into the defensive end and make sure that you can help if someone does get beat. Watch this player here as he kind of jogs into the defensive zone. He's not really watching the ball and therefore is not ready to slide. The player on ball gets beat and now they score. Now, one of the biggest ways that players traditionally give up fast break opportunities, odd man transition chances, is because they slide up field. They think that because they're the last man who is there, and then someone's coming down with the ball, that they need to get on that player as quickly as possible. Now, this is completely incorrect. We wanna stay with the deepest player so that we don't give them an opportunity to pass it up over our heads and have a breakaway. This also is because we want to limit the amount of time an offensive player coming down the floor has in order to make his decision. So we wanna delay making our decision as long as possible so that once we do make our decision, their decision making has to happen quickly. So in our example, blue team's coming down the floor, O1 is carrying into the offensive zone. Now, if D1 slides over way up here, O2 is wide open, he's gonna be able to catch the ball and score. So as O2 is cutting, we want to make sure that D1 stays with him until O1 actually gets dangerous. So once he does get dangerous, this is a lot shorter of a slide. And so he can even almost fake the slide, like fake going, and then try to get back to O2. But because he's delaying, we also have D2, who might be able to get in here and make a play on O2 because he slow played. So for the most part, this usually happens kind of up in the middle of the floor here. We just want our players to know, make sure you stay with the deepest player on the other team so we don't give up breakaways and transition by sliding upfield. In this clip, I want you to watch this player here. Notice how after the ball turns over, Rather than staying with the deepest player, he slides upfield to the ball, leaving an easy pass and breakaway for us, and we score. In this clip, I want you to notice this player, he once again slides upfield towards our ball carrier, which leaves another offensive player to get deeper than him. We eventually get a headman pass and a goal. The final thing that we're going to cover within our defensive transition is that sometimes our defensive transition starts before we even lose the ball. So. As our offense is playing, let's say the shot clock is winding down. You hear the three, two, one. Most people always want to get a last shot. Now, this is not always the best example, and we'll show you the offensive side of this in a minute. But as we are playing, if, if time is running down and this player can't get a good shot, he should roll the ball into the corner here 
and make the defensive team go pick up the ball while our team is able to get down the floor, get into our defensive transition sets, and just get in to play defense. That way we don't get a wild shot that hits the boards, bounces up over, their team catches it, and every one of our players is still down here as they're moving up the floor. Now, as we move into our transition offense, the first thing that we can do, which everybody knows and usually practices quite a bit, is we can use our draw and dump. So whether we have a two on one, a three V two, a four V three, if we have any type of advantage, we want to draw the defensive player, move the ball, make sure we're trying to get to the front of the cage, draw again, move the ball, and try to get a 3v2 to become a 2v1 to become a 1v0 with the goalie. Now, every time as we're shooting, whether it's a breakaway, just any kind of type of shot we want, we always want to have our players cross the front of the goal and shoot with our six to the inside. If we can make the goalie take a step and move, that's going to make it much more difficult for him to make a save. These first two clips are simply clips of breakaways, and I really just want you to notice how as the player is running in, he crosses the face of goal, makes the goalie move, and finishes. In this next clip, we get a nice little turnover, a great ground ball. He turns the corner on his defenseman, making sure he protects his stick. Then he crosses the face of goal as he finishes. In this clip, we get a nice little outlet pass. We have a two on one, simple draw, dump, and finish. In this clip, we get a great outlet pass from the goalie. We now have a two on one break, and I want you to watch how this player fakes away the defenseman, comes in, gets a great shot. This clip is definitely one of my favorites. We end up with a four on three advantage. The goalie outlets it to the off box side. We clear up the field quickly, and notice how it is the trailing player who creates our advantage. A trailer comes in, we get a nice little throwback, one more, and now this player takes his time and finishes. Now within our draw and dump philosophy, one of the best looks that we can find is a trailer look. So as O1 comes in, if he is covered by D1, and O2 is trailing the play but is open, O2 will yell trailer. That will tell O1 that he is open behind the play. O1 will step away and move the ball to O2, who now has a wide open time going to the goal because O1 drew D1 out. And so this trailer look is huge, whether we're coming down with an advantage or even just in our slow break stuff. As the ball moves to the offensive end, it doesn't look like there's anything there, but as players are cutting the middle through the middle, it creates space for our trailing player to step in, receive a pass, and snipe a corner. Another one of the really cool things that we can do if we have an advantage coming into the offensive side of the floor is we can actually just set a pick in transition rather than draw and dump. And so let's say we're coming in on offense, O1 has the ball, D1 is kind of defending him, trying to kind of slow play these two players. Rather than having D1 cut the middle, like let's say he's a player who doesn't have the best finishing skills, not the best player who can catch the ball. Instead of coming to the opposite side of the floor and drawing and dumping, he can just come and he can just come under and kind of set a pick on D1 so that O1 can come around him, get to the middle of the field, and take his shot. It's definitely one of the more advanced plays that you can see made, but when players do it, it really does free up good shooters rather than passing to a player who might not catch the ball. In this play, this player splits a double to create offensive transition. Now notice this player here. He doesn't have his stick up because he knows that the player with the ball is one of the team's best finishers. So instead, he sets an up pick, the player comes around it, gets to the middle of the field and scores. Now the next way that we can really gain offensive transition, and this is only in the second period, is we can use our sub game to gain an advantage. So as O1 is being defended by D1 coming down the floor on the off box side, O2 here is defended by D4. And so D4 is just dropping in. He's kind of watching O2 here. Now if O2 can just sub out and get O6 on the floor, this may create an advantage that we can utilize and just pass the ball to the player cutting out of the box. That player can come to the middle of the field and take a nice little shot. In this clip, we get a nice little turnover on the boards and as the ball is being moved up the field, we see how in the second period we can get great offensive advantages by subbing off on the defensive end and on so far into our offensive zone. Get a nice little draw, dump, and finish. 
Now let's say that we don't have any advantage coming into our defensive end. How do we want our slow break to work? So the best way to run a slow break is to get the ball to these lower corners here or here. And that's because as you get the ball to the low corners, the goalie has to respect you and look to the side, leaving most of the backside open. Then you cut the middle and set picks as players are coming into the offensive zone. So once again, let's act like O1 one has the ball. He is going to carry the ball to this corner. And now all of these players who are getting in, the defense is defending, trying to get in. As these other offensive players come in through the floor, they should cut the middle. And as they are cutting the middle, what we're doing is we are creating space. So once they cut the middle, they're gonna end up kind of wrapping around, coming up to the top of the floor. But as they cut the middle, everyone has to drop out of this space up top leaving an area for a player to step into and get a nice trailer pass, catch the ball, maybe dodge, and then get a nice shot off. As we are doing this, another thing that these players who are cutting the middle can do is because the defense is already in, as they're cutting the middle, obviously the defense doesn't want them to do that, so they're gonna push them, but the offensive players can pick these players into the middle too. So as 4 here comes in, let's say D2 defends him, so it's these two here. He can come and he can set a pick on him, pushing him into the middle, then step out and set a pick on the ball for O1 to step over. The same thing can happen on this opposite side. Let's track this one back. So if D5 cuts the middle first, O3 comes through the middle here. Now, if O3 picked his man into the middle of the field, now we have room for him to step out, set a pick on D4 so that this player can come off and now we're using all of our traditional pick and slip techniques. Now, the really cool thing about cutting the middle other than just the fact that we are freeing up space through the middle of the field for players to come to the middle and shoot from, is that for the most part, a lot of teams run a pass down, pick down, and cycle offense. So as our team comes in, because they're cutting the middle and setting picks on either side, that's really going to help them get into their offensive set automatically, really quickly, which should keep the defense on their toes and hopefully we can beat them early. Now because slow breaks are what happen most often, we are gonna see seven separate clips of all of the different things we've just talked about. In our first clip, we get a nice easy clear and as we move the ball up field, Notice how all three players all cut the middle, clearing the middle of the field. Now, he actually doesn't get to the middle to shoot, but it keeps the defenseman on ball kind of away from him. He just steps over it, it shoots, and scores. In this next clip, watch how this player goes to set a pick. This other one looks like he's going to set a pick and then slips through. This clears space for this player to come over the top, roll back, get to the middle, and score. In this clip, watch how all of these players on the backside are setting picks, up picks, down picks, cutting. Then a trailing player comes in, catches the ball, does a nice little wind up face dodge, gets in and scores. In this clip, we're gonna see a great example of how cutting the middle clears space off ball for a player to cycle to the top of the floor. Notice how this player cuts the middle, creates space. This player comes to the top of the floor, accepts a feed, catches and shoots. In our next two clips, we're going to see how cutting the middle is also beneficial for the cutter, not just to clear space. So watch this player here. Notice how as the ball comes in, it doesn't look like anything's going to happen. He takes a nice step up field and then cuts behind his defenseman, accepts a feed, and finishes. In this next clip, watch this player here and the player coming from the box. The player who's on the floor now is going to sub off and the player coming on the field is going to cut the middle almost by a fake up pick. So the player subs off, another player comes onto the floor, now he cuts the middle, gets fed, finishes. In our final example, we're gonna see how picking actually works in the transition game. So as the ball comes into the offensive zone, the players who are backside are gonna pick their own men in, start cutting, and this final trailer who comes into the play sets a great pick, slips to the goal, catches, and finishes. The final thing that we're gonna talk about within our offensive transition is a way that we can actually gain offensive transition before we even get the ball. So if we're playing a team that struggles with the shot clock, the shot clock always seems to be winding down, they don't get good shots out of it, or we just know that we can defend their five with four pretty easily, we can gain an offensive advantage by having one of our players leave the zone early. So 
If O1 has the ball here, he passes it down. Say he passes it down again to O3. Now, if the shot clock is going three, two, we can have our player leave the defensive zone early, wait for the shot clock to hit. This player will then have to drop the ball. We'll go pick it up quickly, and then we will throw a nice headman pass all the way up to them, and they will have a breakaway or some other type of offensive transition. Now, this is actually one that I think is really cool because some teams don't have a lot of players. We actually played a team where I think they only had five or six players, but so one of their better players, they would actually play man down the entire time and just have their best finisher kind of stay in their offensive zone the entire time. And once they gained possession for any reason, they just threw it up and out to them. And I think they scored two or three goals. Eventually, we just played 4v4 and had a player actually defend that player. But So it's a really kind of a cool little trick you can play and you can train a couple players on your team to do it so that we can get more offensive transition. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If there was anything that you found really valuable or something that I missed, definitely leave a comment down in the comment section. If you want to download the playbook PDF for your playbook, you can get that at patreon.com slash Powlax by clicking this link up here in the corner or the link in the description. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on, and share this video if you really enjoyed it. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.